All right, so um, what I'd like to do, just real quick before we move on to some uh, new stuff, is I would like to um, give you just a quick demonstration, a way to sort of visualize equilibrium, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, I have a couple of uh, plastic uh, containers here. You should, what I'd like you to do is envision these together, right? They fit inside each other. This is our reaction vessel. This is where our reaction is taking place, okay? Where we have some chemicals, you know, A plus B going to C plus D. We have some generic chemical reaction, it's, you know, right? We have A plus B going to C plus D. But remember, we're now talking about reactions that are reversible, so we can also have C and D go to reform A and B. So what I'm going to do is I want you to imagine sort of envisioning in your head that these two buckets, remember, are together in the same, they represent the same volume, the same container, okay? One of them is going to hold our reactants, and one of them is going to hold our products. And we're going to have reaction rates, okay? The rate of the chemical reactions are represented by the size of the beaker. The bigger the beaker, the bigger, bigger the potential forward rate. These beakers represent essentially the rate constants, okay? These are the rate constants. The reverse reaction has a smaller rate constant because this is an exothermic reaction. So under these conditions, it's harder for the reverse reaction to take place. Okay, so the rate constant is smaller. This is our forward reaction, larger, it's a bigger beaker, a faster potential reaction. Okay, so the reactants are just going to be some water. Start off with about one liter of water in here. Um, and that's really hard for us to see, so we're just going to add some food coloring to it. Okay, so now it's, it's pretty easy to see the levels, right? We can see the level of the water. Okay, remember, these are in this, this is, they represent the same physical volume. It's just so we can separate out the reactants and the products. Now, we're going to imagine this reaction taking place in tiny slices of time. Okay, so over a tiny piece of time, we scoop from both sides. Okay, now... Remember, the size of the beaker represents essentially the rate constant K. How much liquid do I have in the forward reaction? I have a full amount, right? I have a lot. This reaction is happening very quickly. And the reverse reaction has, why? There are no products yet. So there's nothing for the reverse reaction to take place with. So I'm going to scoop them over. Okay, this represented, this pouring represented reactants turning into products and products turning into reactants. The two parts of this reaction, the forward and the reverse. Okay, now <clears throat> you can see the concentration of the products has increased. So when I scoop this time, okay, I'm getting some products changing into reactants. Notice what happened to the amount in this beaker? Did it go up or down? It went down. Why would it go down? The concentration of my reactants is decreasing, so the rate is decreasing. So I pour. The rate of the forward reaction is decreasing, while the rate of the reverse reaction is increasing. Okay? So again, notice the reverse reaction is speeding up. It's getting fuller and fuller beaker. This one is continuing to go down a little bit. It's going down slowly. Okay, notice again the forward reaction is starting to drop. The reverse reaction rate continues to speed up. But what's going to happen is that we're going to get to a point after we let this reaction go for a little bit, where these two beakers essentially are holding the same volume. Okay. 
So we look at the concentrations here. Hold on just a second. Let me get um, let me get something so you can see this. So the height of the liquid inside here represents the concentration. The more stuff in the beaker, the greater the concentration, because remember these are in the same physical volume. So the concentration of the products has increased. The concentration of the reactants has decreased. If I look at my forward reaction, remember this beaker represents my forward reaction rate. If I look at the amount of, and then I do this, this remember this little beaker represents the reverse reaction rate. Okay, they are starting to get closer together. So we're going to scoop again. And now let's measure. Okay, so you can see that those two levels are about the same. Okay, we're going to call this essentially at equilibrium. Okay, now I can pour these over and I can continue to do this. I can continue to have this reaction take place. This is what happens in an equilibrium, right? I continue to dump. And again, to within the, you know, error of my measurement, those are basically the same level. I, you know, my scooping isn't perfect. This is a simulation, right? And I can keep pouring as long as I want. They're going to continue to be at the same level because the rate at which I'm transferring from one to the other is the same. Okay, when I scoop from here and I scoop from here, I'm scooping the same amount. The forward and the reverse reaction rates are the same. Are the height of this water, are the concentrations of these products and reactants equal? Nope. Are they changing anymore? Nope. The rates are equal, the concentrations are steady. Okay? So, oh, that just means that, so the, the, the concentration isn't equal, it's just... Right. At, the, at equilibrium, the concentrations do not have to be equal. They have to be stable. They have to be not unchanging. The rates of the forward and reverse reaction are equal. Is the um, products always... So, no. So, whether you have more products or more reactants depends on the nature of your chemical reaction, the temperature, what your, two rea what your reactions are, and stuff like that. This reaction happens to be one where the concentration of the products is higher than the reactants. Well, what would that tell us about the equilibrium constant? Would it be greater than or less than 1? What would the rate equa the equilibrium expression look like? Right? So would this value, based on what we see here, be greater than or less than 1? Greater than one. Concentration of the products is higher than the concentration of the reactants. Okay, the denominator is bigger than the numerator. So this value is going to be greater than one. Okay? So this is a sort of way, uh, hopefully, that you can sort of visualize this equilibrium process taking place. You have, to, you have to know the equilibrium constant. So you have to figure out the equilibrium constant. Usually we do that by experimentation. Higher than, one, higher than one means you're going to have more products. Less than one, more reactants. It could be equal to one. Or balanced. Yep.